Save the reef, save the food. Save the food, you keep the idea of peace alive. What's this mean? It means that that bumper sticker that says save the reef isn't doing a good enough job because people don't know what a reef really is, even right here in Florida. So I wanna break it down to you guys. I'm standing in Key West right now, which is um, right off of the uh, third largest reef in the entire world. I'm stretching all the way down the Keys. A lot of people don't realize that I'm standing on what was the reef when the dinosaurs were alive. This was 20 feet above me right now. So corals do not care about sea levels rising or dropping. However, they do care about climate change, it seems. Now, coral reefs all around the world are less than 0.1% of the surface area. Yet 25% of the species chooses to live there. Think about that for a minute. Why would 25% of the species in the ocean choose to live in less than 1% of its surface area? That's because my homie's the coral. 450, 500 million years old, these guys are the oldest ones. Now, this is an ancient businessman. Now, I call him the businessman because dude knows what's up. He brought the ocean to him. Because some of them grows like this, some of them grows like this, some of them grows in fingers, some of them grows like fans. It creates habitat and homes for fish. This is an amazing thing that makes the entire world tick. Now coral, they spawn just like fish do. You know, so let's say a lionfish, for example, will spawn every few days because they're invasive. Now boy fish swim together with girl fish and squirt out some stuff and open some magic stuff happens kids but that's not the case with coral because they can't swim so they choose to spawn only once a year and it's a special sacred time of the year and if you've ever got to see it it's amazing it looks like a snow globe but the snow's coming up from underneath the ocean now these corals spawn once a year and often enough, they choose to do it about two hours after the sun sets, after the second day of the first full moon in August. That's right. And even then, they have a one in one million chance of having a baby every 50 to 100 years. So when people ask me, Captain Planet, why is planting coral so important? I break it down to them like that. 25% of the ocean species needs that coral. They're dying so fast, guys. You know, over half of our reef here is dead. You know, and almost three quarters of the Great Barrier Reef. These guys have stood through the times. They're twice as old as when the first dinosaur came into existence. Not extinction, existence. These guys were sitting in the ocean like, hey, forget about it. I ain't got a problem here. But one thing they do have a problem with is us. They've been through so many global warmings and so many ice ages. I just taught you guys how where I'm standing is where they were in the last tropical age with the dinosaurs. When the ice age come, they come moving out. You know, that sea level drops because the water moves north and south where it's cold stacks up on top of each other as icebergs, makes the sea level lower. Well, now that they're melting, they're coming back up, of course. That's not their problem, though. The only way that we have figured out how to make corals bleach in an aquarium setting is by raising the temperature two degrees Celsius. Now that I see some of you guys are actually doing some research and reading for yourselves, you might Google what I say afterwards and be like, well, Captain Planet, the ocean hasn't raised two degrees Celsius. Um, and yeah, I know. But it's really hard to replicate the ocean. And why it's not two degrees Celsius warmer, but we're still experience coral bleaching, is simply because of ocean acidification. The sun doesn't kill an ant. But if you hold a magnifying glass between the two just right, it will. And that's where ocean acidification steps in with that global warming, adding extra stress. 
So coral, all the time people are like, hey dude, what is it? An animal, a plant, a rock? And I'm like, yeah, because it is. It's like all three dudes. Now, first and foremost, it's an animal. It starts its life. Closest relative is a jellyfish. So it's got stinging tentacles that come out of each polyp and attack its prey, pull it in. Each polyp, every little hole, has its own stomach, its own mouth, and its own stinging tentacles that attack its prey. Now, because of that, we always assumed that it was like human beings. What's up, Pete? We always assumed that it was like human beings, meaning if, if we think they're like humans, we assume that each polyp was a different animal of the same species living together as a colony, kind of like how us humans live in a town. Um, come to find out that's not true. Guess what? It's more like the movie Avatar. Yep. Each polyp is actually like an avatar connected to a mother. So when you're, we, we thought that polyps were the living beings and they came together and made up a coral head. But come to find out the coral is what's alive and they're made up of individual. So think that Key West is the animal and I'm just a polyp in it. It's mind blowing stuff. Now it also produces a hard calcium carbonate structure as it grows. So it's just like limestone. So it's like a rock too. That's what builds these reefs. And thirdly is the coolest part. It's like it's part plant. The homie Zook. Zozenthele, my favorite algae. So the coral a long time ago, he looks over at the algae and he says, hey man, if I build a resort, you wanna move in, you know, and pay the rent for me? And that's exactly how it went down. So the coral builds this hard calcium carbonate structure, this, this rockin' hotel, and Zozenthele moves in, accept the offer. And he pays the rent and he paints the house. So he gives 90 to 98% of the energy that that coral needs to survive, photosynthetically by soaking up the sun. Not only that, he paints the house. So all colors that we see in all coral come from algae, Zozenthele. So now when you guys think about global warming, think about the algae side. You know how I said we don't have an algae problem, we have a nutrient pollution problem. Well, this is a case of we don't have a coral problem, we have an algae problem. You know, it's the algae. He's like a good old honest Kansas farm boy, you know, as far as he pays his rent. But he's worked himself too hard. He's getting too hot too fast, too acidic too fast. And just like you and me, when we get too hot and, and work too hard, we can't produce right. And when we can't do a productive job, what happens? Our efficiency goes down. So he goes from doing 90, 98% of the energy to let's say 50% of the energy. And the coral thinks, well, it doesn't really think because it doesn't have a brain, but it reacts and, and says to itself, it, it has a disease. And just like when I'm sick, every pore in my body will sweat to get it out just like the coral will. Every polyp expels everything in its body to lower that likelihood of having a disease because he thinks something's wrong with it when really the algae's not being as productive it should be. Now for the first time, it's not wanting to come back. You know, coral bleaching is almost a natural thing that has to occur for evolution. However, it's always had three to five months for the algae zozenthele to come back into the coral before it dies forever. And now we're experiencing times where the algae's not wanting to go back in. Again, he's like that good old Kansas farm boy. He's honest. And when he knows he can't pay but 50% of the rent, he isn't about to shake hands on a 90, 98% rental agreement. And it's not like it's a democracy out there and they're having uh, debates on what's right. It's simple reactions. Just like the rhinoceros, it's survived millions and millions of years, but it's not able to survive mankind. So, the reef, 25% of the food, right? That means that it's the human food chain, the human food line, reality. That's why we protect our reefs. Because if we lose the reef, we lose the food. If we lose the food, that's when I start acting like Joe Pesci and I'm like, Am I, are you laughing at me? Because I'm not laughing at you. Because I'm going to take your little sandwich. Yeah. So literally, you save the reef, you save the food. You save the food, you keep the idea of peace alive.
because somebody's going to want to take your sandwich. But Captain Planet's not going to let that happen. Love you guys. Um, ask any questions. I'd love to help answer them. Give some ideas of some videos you want. I was out here on this uh, beautiful island, and I thought I'd remind my people why I moved out here in the first place to protect and save this reef. Love you dudes.